Welcome also those who are watching online. It's on. Beautiful. Thank you, Marilyn. And uh, John, again, you're welcome. So that's great. It's 10.30. Don't forget that. It's good because uh, it's not that cold. We give time to the windshield to tow out and so on. So that's great. Uh, what else I wanted to say? That's good. I'm going to start with, start with the silent time and then we pray. And then just get ready into your Bible. Not uh, I'll give you the passages in a moment. I'll do a short review. We're going to be working on the rapture still, the rapture of the church. We discuss the event. I'm going, just going to see a few things today. We discuss the uh, timing of it, and uh, we move on word and so on. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your presence within us, your presence among us, and your protection over us, Lord. We don't need to tell you what's going on outside here on this planet. You know these things. And on Thursday night, Father, kneeling down, asking you to check that plague. Thank you for your patience with us. Give us protection, protective care, Father, in the realm of the spiritual and in the realm of the physical as well, Lord. What an opportunity for us to study the end time as we see the world unfolding right now. Elections to come, the pandemic, the war in Armenia, and all these things together, Father. We can't help but to hope in you. And that's where our hope has to be placed. And to give the proper place and respect to the scriptures, not to give it an interpretation based on the news, but to give it an interpretation based upon the scriptures and your will and your standards. So I'm going to ask you at this point to settle our hearts for an hour and a half that we may be able to receive what we need to receive, be glorified among us, and give us your peace, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can take that chart. I think it's on top of your, but you can uh, also follow me with the, uh, with the um, TV screen. Last week, we started uh, the rapture of the church within the, eschat the eschatology of the invisible church. Okay? Don't be afraid by the word eschatology. It's, it's a technical word. It's, it's, a, it's a doctrinal word. Word meaning the doctrine of the end times. That's how theologians use the term to wrap up everything that, believe, that belongs to the future time. So now we have started the eschatology of the invis invisible church. And the invisible church is all believers of a, from the, from the uh, church age. That's why the church began in 1830. That you know. And where our 1900 here should be changed for 2020. Doesn't matter. It's an old chart. So we are still continuing until the rapture of the church. Don't be led astray because you're doing this study here with us and lots of people around you will say, I don't believe in the rapture. So if they don't believe in the rapture, it's not a, a way to say things. It's not believing in the Bible, only in portion of it, because the, the, the rapture is very, very scriptural. We define those who will be raptured last week. Okay, The rapture do not belong to any Old Testament saints. Okay. The rapture is an event for those who will basically not taste death, uh, physical death, because basically most people taste physical death, but there will be a group of people that when he comes back in the air to get his church will not have died. They will, still, they will be still alive and they're going to have to be raptured. And at the main time, before getting in heaven, being translated uh, for the new body, which will take place in a very quick fashion of time. We have looked at words last week, atom, atomic, blinking of an eye, uh, twinkling of an eye, rather not blinking, and so on. I gave you, then we moved on on capital B last week, the event itself that he comes in the mid-heaven. Okay, I described this with the book of Thessalonians, giving you all the steps from the third heaven and so on. He doesn't touch the earth at the rapture. 
So maybe the most important thing for you to understand here, it's always to make a clear cut difference between the rapture and of the church and the second coming. This is not the same thing. And lots of people mix the two events. It's very important to understand these things. The rapture occurs at the end of the church age and is coming back only at the end of the great tribulation to touch the earth with you. So that's great. Now it's no longer review. Keep me accountable for the timing, for the, the speed of it. So the timing of it, when will it happen and so on. So the clear teaching, now you can start your note. The clear teaching of the scriptures shows that the rapture will happen before the great tribulation. The rapture of the church will happen before the great tribulation simply because the church doesn't go through the great tribulation. Would you be kind enough to read your book of Luke chapter 21? Go to Luke chapter 21 verses 34 to 35. And 36 also. Go to Luke chapter 21, verses 34, 35, and 36. We won't need 37, but this scripture is not on your outline. Luke 21, verses 34 to 36. Be on the guard so that your, no, your hearts will not be weighted down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of life, and that they will come on, a, a, on you suddenly like a trap. For it will come upon all those who dwell on the face of the earth, but keep on the alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape. It's to escape the great tribulation. All these things that are about to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Circle to escape and circle to stand before the Son of Man. What that passage of the scripture is teaching here, the great tribulation will touch the surface of the earth. It's not only in Jerusalem, it's not only in the United States or so on. The great tribulation will hit the planet. And in order for us to escape these things, and to, stand before the, 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 uh, and to stand before the Son of Man, it's to be off the planet. And the, by means, the means by which you be off the planet, for those who are saved, you will be raptured. So you won't be present to go through the Great Tribulation. Okay? That's the means to escape. And the means to escape is by means of salvation. Those who do sustain a relationship with the Messiah won't be hit by the Great Tribulation. This is the means by which you escape the rapture, and the rapture will also be the means by which you stand before the Son of Man. It's beautiful. It's a very strong passage on the rapture, Luke 21. Okay? Come with me in 1 Thessalonians in your New Testament, 1 Thessalonians. Now I'm talking about the timing of it. Okay? 1 Thessalonians, but instead of giving you only the references here, we take time to read the scriptures. Come with me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Make sure not to be in 2 Thessalonians. Come with me in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 9 and 10. For they themselves report about us what kind of a reception we had with you. And how you turned to God from idol to serve a living and true God. I want verse 10. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, that is Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath to come. Circle the wrath to come. The wrath to come here, it's not the same wrath as you find in the book of Romans, a wrath against sin, a general wrath against sin. The wrath against sin is the one found in Romans. Okay, it's a wrath that he has since Adam and all Adam and Eve fell. The wrath to come here is what you see on the TV screen right there, the great tribulation on the extreme right. And as you have seen right now, Jesus who rescued us from the wrath to come. So once again, it's a very strong verse 
for the timing of the rapture, you are not going through. So it's a pre-tribulational rapture. Go to 1 Thessalonians. You are already there. Go to chapter 5. Go to chapter 5. Listen to that. I'm going to read from 1 to 10, and this should be clear in your mind, undebatable events. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10 goes as follows. Now as to the times and the epochs, brothers, you have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord, circle this, this is the great tribulation, will come just like a thief in the night. While they are saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them suddenly like labor pains upon a woman with child and they will not escape. You see, we have already looked at all the labor pains that le leads to the great tribulation. But you brothers are not in darkness that the day would overtake you like a thief. For you are all sons of light and sons of day. We are not of night nor of darkness. Circle the totality of verse 5. So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us be alert and sober. For those who are asleep, who are sleep, who, those who sleep do their sleeping at night, and those who get drunk get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet, the hope of salvation, circle that. You are already saved. So the hope of salvation right there, it's not your salvation, salvation. It's your glorification aspect of salvation. Verse 9 is the crux of it. For God has not destined us for wrath, but for obtaining salvation to our Lord Jesus Christ. The salvation again here is your glorification. So it is clear. You are not destined to wrath. Say an amen to that, please. Amen. You are not going to the great tribulation. Okay? Revelation in last, Revelation 3.10. The two passages in Thessalonians are very strong. You need to be, explained to, to be able to explain the type of wrath. Now we get into Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. It's the church age. We already looked at it. I'll be short. It says this. Because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I also will keep you from the hour of testing. That's all I want. The hour of testing is the great tribulation. So, the rapture is imminent. Write the word down, please, in case you don't know how to write properly. Write it properly. The rapture is imminent. And imminency here does not mean that it will come soon. Imminency here does not necessarily mean that it will come soon, but it means that it can come now at any moment of time. Don't ask me when, I don't know. The only thing that I do know, it's a pre-tribulational rapture, but there is no sign before this. It can come at any moment of time. The most important point to note right now for you, which you already know, the rapture precedes the great tribulation, but it does not start the great trib. I repeat, the tribulation precedes the rapture, but it does not start the great tribulation. Very few Christians know about it. Okay, the rapture precedes the great tribulation, but it does not start. The, the rapture precedes the, the, the great tribulation, but it does not start the uh, the Great Tribulation. Because what begins the Great Tribulation on day one, you know. What is it? The signing. the signing of the covenant with the Antichrist. Wow. I'm impressed. Okay. There is a lot of confusion for many here. So that's why I'm very emphatic about these things. Because I know that you get excited with these studies. And you can share with your pastors. And they, maybe they don't hold the same views. Okay. 
But this is very important from the scripture standpoint, which we will basically re-look re again at the book, of, uh, the book of Daniel, what ignites the Great Trib, the day one of the seven years of the Great Tribulation, is the signature between the Antichrist and the people of Israel that will be there at, uh, at that time. We are ready to move on. Capital C, the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ, I don't teach that in Daniel, I don't think so here. That's the judgment seat of Christ. We read already at the judgment seat of Christ, we read Luke 21, verses 34 to 36. We just did to stand before the Son of Man. And if I am raptured right now, this is the means because I can escape. We escape by means of salvation. So if I am raptured right away, I'm going to be standing in front of the Son of Man. What will be happening there? I will partake, and you will also partake in the judgment seat of Christ. Make a note of that. Come with me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. The study that we do right now, as we are an older group in age, physically, we need to be careful to understand that properly, chapter 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Because as we approach, perhaps, physical death, we need to find our peace somewhere. Because often I have seen in the years of ministry that I did, not too many, but in a few cases, so many Christians that come to the death death by means of cancer and they're still uncertain and scared of where they are going. So this passage here, what I teach right now about the judgment seat of Christ, has to be completely understood. This is not a judgment unto sins. Because this has been dealt with, with you on earth. When you receive Christ, your sins, past, present, and future, have been gone completely need to understand the work of Christ. So this judgment here, the judgment seat of Christ, will be a judgment unto rewards for the messianic kingdom. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. We must, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Circle that carefully. So that each one may be recompensed for his deeds where in the body, according to what he has done, whether good or bad. I'll comment later. Go back to 1 Corinthians. Go back one book. Go to chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. Go back to chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. Again, it's Paul. What did he say in 5.10? We must all appear in the, 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 the judgment seat of Christ, to receive our recompense for what we have done in the body of Christ, being good or bad. So meaning serving with a bad attitude, in a sinful way, and so on and so forth, in the body. So that's why it's very important to keep going with the body. We cannot stop being, not, not gathering and being part of the body. So that's very important. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 according to the grace of God which was given to me, like a wise master builder, I laid a foundation. You see, apostolic authority he is the one that laid the foundation with the church, with other apostles. And another, which is Francois and you, is building on it. But each man must be careful how he builds on it. For no man can lay a foundation other than the one which is laid, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, if a man builds up the foundation with gold, silver, and precious stones, you can make a slash after precious stones, wood, hay, and straw, each man's work will, be will become evident for the day. What is the day here? The day is the day of the judgment seat of Christ. We'll show it, be it, we'll show it because it is to be revealed with fire, 
and the fire itself will test the quality, circle 10 times quality of each man's work here. Circle that carefully. If any man's work which he has built on, it remains, meaning being of uh, gold, precious, and uh, uh, silver, and precious stones, he will receive a reward. If any man's work is burnt up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Okay? So Christ at the judgment seat of Christ will play the DVD of only when you became a believer. Everything that you have done prior to be a believer, be it good or bad, will not be referred to. Okay? Never, ever. He will not play that tape because that tape has been thrown into the lake of forgetfulness. So, on day one that you have been saved, you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit, whether you speak or t in tongues or not, you have been placed, being baptized in the Spirit, is the means by which you have been placed in the church that was your day one of your new life. That he will play. Because all of you, without exception, looking at everybody, you have gifts of the Spirit. And he will play it, and you, he will give an account for you of how you have exercised your gifts and depending on what you have done in the body, you will get your rewards for the messianic kingdom. I cannot be clear, clearer of speech than this. You have been given the gift of this, this and that, and this and that. I don't want to name, not to put myself on the spot. But now, everything that you have done. So, the principle is, it's not the quantity of time that you have been in the church. I've never missed a Sunday. Maybe you should have missed a few. It's not the quantity, it's the quality. So you embark into a ministry, you embark on the board, or you disembark the board, or you join a body. Your pastor has to lead you in the proper way, quality-wise, not quantity-wise. God will not count the Sundays that you have missed. God will look at the Sundays where your heart was genuinely placed in Him in humility, and if the proper decorum was respected, and if the gifting of the people was done in a proper way. That's James chapter 3, verse 1. Don't let too many of you, beloved, become teachers, because they will be judged more severely. Where? At the judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. God will tell me, you taught this, this way. You taught Deuteronomy this way, Francois. That was, that was completely off context. What am I going to lose? My salvation? No. I'm going to lose my rewards. All of them? No. Because there was good books that I, teach, that I taught properly. So that's why that position has to be very, taken very carefully. And it doesn't matter the size of the church. We need to look forward to sit on the replace that is biblical for your benefits. And that's why the struggle on the last few Thursday night when I explain the proper decorum and so on. So that's it. That's all it is, the Bema. Okay? So basically, we'll put all our baggage together. What is made of gold, silver, and precious stone? I don't, you don't need a degree here. When you put gold and silver and precious stones in the fire, they don't disappear, they get refined. Pure gold, the fire refines the gold, refines the silver, and refines the rock. You know how they do gold, they boil, they boil the, the, the rock and the, all the crap goes away, we call it the dross, and then it's pure gold. It will refine the work when you came and when you embark into something genuinely. This will be refined for you. When I came here grumpy, you, you see, you feel being in a church message here. When I do a thing here, wash the washroom, again, scriping the, 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 the pee here and... And when it's done in this way, this will be burnt. It's the hay, the wood, and the, st and, the, and the straw. Not you being burnt. So that's why, as mature Christians, we need to strive for quant qu quality, not necessarily quality. God doesn't care if you're involved in ten Bible studies. Get into one. Do it properly.
or two if you have time. Everybody is, is, has his own. It's not the quantity of deeds that we do. Enough. That's beautiful. You understand that. Rewards are crowns. Okay? You will receive crowns. Okay? Now we get into the, 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 the thing of, uh, of revelation. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Go in chapter 9. You're already there. 24 and 25. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24 and 25. Do you not know that those who run a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way, François, that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. They then do it to receive a perishable wrath, but we an imperishable. So he has in mind the Olympic game and all bit, a bit of Greek background here. He runs the race here because of the uh, on the track type of thing. And the winner has a crown here on his head, a perishable, perishable one. So why don't we run the race? Because the crown that you will be receiving here will be a crown that is imperishable. First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians. 2.19. Running the race is walking our Christian walk. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19. For who is our hope or joy or crown of exultation? Crown here is Stephanos. It's not the crown of the king. Crown in the Greek here is Stephanos, one who has overcome. Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? Which coming? The rapture in which you will take you off the planet and you will appear at the judgment seat of Christ. You will receive your rewards. That's a beauty. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 7 and 8. 2 Timothy, I don't know if you know the extent of that passage. Paul is dying. He's going to get executed in a few days. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course, verse 7. I've kept the faith. In the future there is laid up for me the crown, the Stephanus of righteousness, which the Lord, that's Christ Jesus, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. What day? The judgment seat of Christ. And not only to me, but also to all. Stephanie, Francois, who have loved his appearing. That's what you will receive. Crowns. And in, you, we will see in Revelation, when you, we take them off, we don't, we don't give them away. All the Bible expositors teach that you give them away. No. He gave it to you, not meant to be given it away. You will take them off and do it in front of him like this, but you will put them back. He doesn't want them. It's yours. Oh, wow. oh. Never heard that. No. Oh. Everybody is like, do you cast them away? No. You take them off and you worship him and you put that back. He just gave it to you. He's not interested to have it. To be seen later. He got his own one, and it's not a Stephanos that he has. It's a diadem. He's a king. He's not interested in your little crown and the plastic made at the uh, value village. <laughs> and I not, should not say that, because he doesn't see it this way. May God forgive me now. It's a bad analogy. Bad, Francois. It's a crown of an overcomer. And I give it to you, Francois. It's more than value. May God forgive me. It's a bad analogy. I retract my words. Forgive me, Father. It's crowns. It's made. It's of value to you. You don't want to give it back. Keep what belongs to you and don't get rid of it. The marriage of the Lamb. Capital D. That's what he has given us to me by grace. Are for the messianic kingdom. Correct. Tell us just what does that mean? We jump the gun. We, we, I will be there. I will be there because we study Revelation. You, you now you understand that we're building a case right now. Okay? 
when I will be explaining, I'm just going just to respect the question. I feel bad because I compare my crowns to Value Village. But I'm forgiven. <laughs> That's, yeah. it. That's it. Okay, thank you so much. You saved my soul. I will be explaining in the course of time the two types of government in the Messianic Kingdom. There is two types of government. A branch of the Jews and a branch of the Gentiles. Okay. I'm giving you the answer right now. Don't note that now. And you will be in charge of people. Based on what? Your university degree? No. Based on your knowledge of that constitution. Which constitution? Your church constitution? That you cannot sing a good choir unless you're a member? No. Your Bible. So, sitting here, or in any classes of your own local church, or classes that you do with the sword ministry, you're preparing yourself for 1,000 years years of existence and it goes beyond that the eternal order so you're preparing yourself for to have something to do forget for a moment retirement please it's boring to be retired <laughs> not there you will not retire in the messianic kingdom you will be working in charge of the people for 1000 year exercising Top quality job. What's the qualification to get a good job there? Studying now. And Satan is organizing everything to bulldoze the quality studies nowadays with the COVID and everything. Uh, we do small group. Come on. They are unsupervised. It's dangerous. The marriage of the Lamb, capital D. We finish that section. And then in the second half, how long has it been? 10.30. Let's do. This is the marriage. Of, you're going to get married. Oh, not again. <laughs> Derek, are you married now? No. You will in the future. No. No. <laughs> See, it's already denying the plan. That the same mistake as a guy that says that the crowns are value, village value. Okay, let's do the marriage of the Lamb. It's based upon the Jewish background, okay? I write them four steps in the Jewish background of marriage system. You go through four steps. That's still valid today, okay? The arrangement. That's the first step of the Jewish background. The arrangements or arrangement here. The father of the groom in the realm of the physical in Israel. The father of the groom has to pay the price here. The bride's price. I want your daughter. Okay, give me the dowry and everything. So, in the realm of the spiritual, we are the bride of Christ. And he paid the price for us. Was it 30 pieces of silver? No. What was the price? The blood of the Son, He gave His only Son to buy us back. Ephesians chapter 5, 25 to 27. I don't read because you know these things. Then, the second, the second step after you paid the price, TCH, you fetch the fetching of the bride. You go and get the bride. But to go and get the bride, you cannot take the bride at Warmland Center. And if the Warmland Center is too full, they end up sleeping, sleeping on the street. I have nothing against that. When you fetch the bride, you need to have a place prepared for the bride. When will he fetch the bride? At the rapture. John chapter 14, verses 1, 2, and 3. Number three, once you fetch the bride, you do what? A wedding ceremony. A wedding ceremony, you invite only a few friends, your close relative. It will happen for us after the judgment seat of Christ. You invite just a few. So the bride... When you take the bride at the wedding ceremony, that's why she appears in white, you know, with the, the hoopah. And they carry the hoopah, which is the, the, the bride is sitting on it, carried by men with a tent over her. And she's white. 
because the bride has, has have been through a process of cleansing. Tell me when you will go through a process of cleansing. Please, we just did it. At the judgment seat of Christ, he will play the video, and the, 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 not Debbie, but Krista, all your um, A, stubble, and uh, wood will be gone, and you will be completely cleansed. Then it's time for marriage. Okay? Then you go to the marriage feast. And the marriage feast, that's where you invite the bunch of people. And then you know, go and need to go to Beverly Corner and you need to make sure. How many people are coming, Sylvie? 105 20. people. Let's say they will drink about two glasses of wine each. How many bottles do we need? Four. Here's money and make sure that we're not run out of wine. The miracle in Canada. Now marriage feast, you invite more people. That's why the Messianic Kingdom will start on the first seven day with the marriage feast where you will be banqueting with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's a double wedding feast for them because we are the bride of Christ and they are the wife of Jehovah. So let's party. Your, your church Wedding ceremony will take place in heaven after the cleansing. Don't tell me it's difficult. It's a clear teaching of a pre-tribulational rapture. It's clear, clear teaching of it. We're done. We move into part five. Questions on what we have done in the first half. Krista, you won't be let down because your question was technical. Explain more about rewards. It's going to come. Not today. It's going to come. Not today. Question about what we have done. The judgment seat, that's bima? That's the bima? Correct. It's a Greek word for that seat. Bema. So, please, you, you, you did not ask question. Relax with the judgment that you partake. The other, do you know the other judgment has a name? And we will study it. It's in Revelation chapter 20. It's called the Great White Throne Judgment. You don't partake in this. No. You partake in one. The Bema, like he said, the judgment seat of the Messiah, unto rewards. No reviewing of the tape of your past life. It would be completely unfair and unbiblical because it's been thrown into the lake of Forgetfulness, God doesn't want to know about it. So leave that backpack at the cross and get involved today in a local church of your choice somewhere and serve in whatever he is asking you to serve. Giving, deaconing, teaching, praying, name it, exhortation. Do it in the proper way. I was exhorted this morning. Somebody did it in the proper way. That's a gift. Seek qu quality, not quantity. When you don't feel to go one Sunday morning because you're tired, you're upset about something. Not capable of going to Bible study because the head, there is anger there. And our, stay home. It's okay. It's the quality of your service. That's what God seeks first. It's not the quantity. This is a constant remember, reminder for me also. Francois, did you prepare accordingly? Or you rely on your memory or your knowledge and say, I don't need to prepare, know it by heart. So I don't need your support today, Father, because I... Know it by heart. That's where the dangers begin. Because Francois, you're going to turn 60 years old and you have memory lapse and you cannot do an allergy like you did this morning. You need to be more careful with your words. Yes, Father. That's an attitude to have. So as we approach, perhaps, making eye contact with you, Ernie, what you have been through, we taught. We taught about it. And you know that we taught about it. But about what? About going home. 
when you announce this, because it's fatal a fall for certain people of your age, cher man, you think about these things. Because I don't want you to reach that point with fear. Look forward to it. We get married. We see Christ face to face, and he won't allude to me from zero to the age of 33. All the crap that I have done, and uh, there was quite a, a good amount prior to my conversion. Did this, did that, did this. Godfather is asking me, this is no longer your testimony, Francois. Your tem testimony now starts from the age of 33. So 33 minus 60, it's 30 years almost of Christianity, 27 years. That's what I would like you, Francois, to reflect upon and make the correction that you need to make in the course of your Christian walk with me. And I will be the one rewarding you with what you have done in the body. Coffee pause.